All right, so here's an investment one. Uh, let's have a look. So, so here we go. We have a, a financial maths question and let's see how it goes. So it says, on 31 January, 2020, let's highlight this. On 31 January, 2020, uh, Shepo made the first of his monthly deposits of a thousand rand um, into a savings account. He continues to make these deposits at the end of each month until 31 January, 2032. The interest rate is 7.5% compounded monthly. Okay, so that's all pretty basic, pretty easy. Um, and then it says, what will the investment be worth immediately after the last deposit? Okay, so I'm guessing that 95% of you would be okay with the idea that this person, Shepo, is um, trying to save up money, right? So that's definitely going to be a uh, future value type of scenario because he wants the money in the future. So we can use the future value formula. Okay, now we're going to go fill everything in. So um, what is he paying each month? A thousand rand. Okay, so a thousand rand. Then the interest rate is 7.5%. So I say 0 0.075, but you can say 7.5% if you want over 12. Now here's the big question that a lot of people are going to get caught out on. Uh, we might be tempted because normally it, normally it's easy. Normally, if you're just going from 2020 to 2032, you might just say, oh, 12 years. So you would say um, you would say that N is equal to 12 years multiplied by 12, and that would give you 144. But that is actually not correct in this particular question. And we need to now try and think about this and try to make sure we understand why it's not going to be 144. Let's say, um, for example, that we are, uh, let, let's say, for example, um, we are investing from, from 1 January 2020 up until 1 January 2021. Now, if I had to walk up to you while you're in the street or when you're doing whatever you're doing, and I had to randomly be like, hey, if we have an investment from 1 January 2020 up to 1 January 2021, how many months is that? Most of us would just say 12. It just seems logical. It's one year. So that means 12 months. However, what if I told you that this person is going to start paying on the 1st of January, and they're going to stop on the 1st of January 2021. All of a sudden now, if you had to go count it on your, um, on your fingers, if that's even possible, um, you would have 1 January, 1 February, 1 March, 1 April, 1 May, 1 June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and 1 January 2021. If you do that correctly, you should be holding up 13 fingers right now, all right, if you can. Um, so what you should identify is that because this person is going to be, um, because this person is actually starting on 31 January, he that's not the date that he's going to open the account and blah, blah, blah. That is the day that he is starting his payments, okay? And then he's going to make his last payment on 31 January 2032 again. So I want you to be able to understand that because he's starting on the 31st of January and not on like the 31st or the 28th of February or something like that, there is actually going to be one extra payment. And so there's actually going to be 145 payments in this example. Okay, not 144. All right. So I hope that that makes sense, guys. Okay. So there's 145 payments. That's all that I wanted you guys to be okay with. Usually in the exam, it's not going to be like that. And it will be the normal 12 times 12, which is 144. Okay. So it's not normally something that's going to happen, but in this one, it does. And it's a little bit sneaky in my opinion, but there's going to be 145 payments over there, minus one. And then we just fill in the rest of the formula like that. And so if you had to now go work this out, you should end up with a final value for this one 
as um, 234,888, comma, five, three. Okay, so here's number 6.1.2. If he makes no further payments, but he leaves the money in the account, how much money will be in the account on 31 January 2033? So guys, this person has accumulated a nice amount of money. And then he decides, you know what? I don't really need to use the money. I'm just going to leave it in the bank account. I'm not going to make any more payments anymore. I'm not going to pay a thousand rand anymore, but I'm just going to leave the money in the bank. Well, if you leave the money in the bank like that, it's going to start earning interest. Just using the normal grade 11 compound formula. Okay, so he's going to have a total after the, well, in, on 31 January 2032, he's going to have 234,888,53 rand. Then he's going to leave that in the bank for another one year from 31 January 2032 to 31 January 2033. Now, I've probably made a little, some of you very cautious about how many months is that? Is that 12 or is that 13? Well, now we need to be even more careful. So check this out. If I draw a timeline and I start here at 31 January, 2032, then obviously that's going to go through February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and January. So if you look carefully, guys, at the moment, we are over here, but we're not going to make any more payments so you're not going to count the 31st of January. We're not making any payments or anything. All that we want to know now is how long is the money going to be in the bank for? So the money is still going to be in the bank for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 months. Some of you might have wanted to use 13, but this is slightly different. Now we're not making a payment on the 31st of January. So we don't count that as number one. Okay. We're just seeing how many months the, 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 the money is going to be in the bank. And so that's going to be 12 months. And so we can say one plus zero point, what was the interest rate? 0.7 or 7.5% 7 over 12. And because it's only for uh, 12 months, we're just going to put a 12 over there. And then we can work that out. And there we go. That should give us two, five, three, one, two, three, comma, five, four.